Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So even though we have 10 months, over 10 months until the 2025 NHL draft, it's never too early to look ahead to it in Bleacher Report, my favorite hockey website, because I do some work for them part time, but they decided to drop a 2025 NHL mock draft, a way too early mock draft. So we're going to go through that right now. I've previously dropped my like top 10 players in the 2025 draft. We're going to go one through 16. It's going to be interesting to not only see who Bleacher Report has as in, in the order of where they go. I assume Hagen's is one, but after that, this draft is still kind of up in the air. But I'm also very interested to see which teams they think are going to suck. Like, are the San Jose Sharks going to have the first overall pick? Where is Chicago going to be? We're going to go through that now. Let's pull up the article. We got the way too early 2025 NHL mock draft, and it is obviously way, way too early. From Lyle Richardson, posted yesterday, James Hagen's the pride and joy of Long Island. Long Island born and raised. Columbus, this would be hell. If James Higgins <laughs> went to Columbus, I would absolutely hate that. Uh, James Higgins right now, I would say, is the pretty consensus guy. He definitely still needs to solidify himself this season. It's not some kind of like Connor Bedard level generation. There's not some massive gap. It is possible that guys like Porter Martone, Anton Frundell, Riabkin could potentially pass him. But I think right now, considering this guy dominated at the U18 World Championships, passing Nikita Kucherov's all-time scoring record in a single tournament, on top of being great at the USHL, putting up like the best uh, draft year minus one since Jack Hughes, I believe, in the USHL, dominated that competition. He is definitely the front runner right now. And if Columbus got him, I don't even think Columbus could fumble a trio of Caden Lindstrom, James Higgins, and Adam Fantilli on top of guys like Adam Ye or David Yurchek and Denton Matejchuk. That would not be good. I need San Jose, Chicago, even Calgary to win this. So James Higgins does not stay in the Metro division. And I have to, and he has to play the Islanders three to four times a year. That would absolutely stink. And I assume, yeah, they're, he's great. He's only five foot 10. Some, some, some sites have him listed at five foot nine, but again, the talent is so impressive with him that I, I, I don't think that you factor in his height when it comes to James Higgins. Next up, Porter Martone makes sense. He's kind of right now solidifying himself as that number two guy. Six foot three, very skilled, very good skater. Kind of can be like a Miko Rantanen. Maybe that, that might be a little bit too high of expectations, but you know what I mean? Kind of that power forward, elite first liner. Do I think he's going to be a franchise level player, like a legit 105, 110 point guy driving his own line? No, but if you have a franchise center and you're selecting second, third overall and Porter Martone's available, you take him and he's going to be an amazing number two forward on a legit contending team. So yeah, if San Jose gets him, they did get Sam Dickinson, so maybe they would go with the defenseman, but I think Porter Martone is a, a decent amount ahead of guys like Logan Hensler, like Matthew Schaefer at this point. If San Jose was selecting like fourth or fifth, maybe you go defenseman, but at second, I think Porter Martone right now is probably the pick. Jacob East Wozniak to the Anaheim Ducks. Wow, not even Anton Frundell. This guy has really risen. Fun fact, he's actually born in Australia. One of his parents is Australian, the other one Swedish. Moved him back to Sweden for his hockey development, which makes sense. But yeah, 185 pounds, 185 pounds, six foot three. Uh, 50 points in 36 games, 22 of which are goals. And yeah, for the Anaheim Ducks, I think they're probably going to be bad next year. Maybe they'll take a step to be like 70-ish points. But this would be a very on-brand Pat Verbeek kind of pick. He has traditionally picked his bigger guys, Leo Carlson, Beckett Seneca, Jacob East Wozniak. He likes his big... Uh, Wozniak isn't the most physical guy, but he likes to bet on taller players. And this might be a little bit too high, in my opinion. I think he was like sixth or seventh on my top 10, but still a very, very special talent. And I think it's going to be interesting him next year. Chicago goes Logan Hensler. I, I disagree with this. For, I think Chicago will be picking around fourth overall. But after going Artem Leshinov, both of them are right-handed defensemen. I, I think they need to go with a forward, considering you still got guys like Riabkin, McQueen, Frondell still available in this range. Chicago has a bunch of solid forward prospects, but outside of Bedard, there's really no superstar. When looking at their defense core, I'm not, they don't have a Bedard level, but they have Leshinov, Korchinski, Alex Flask is still pretty uh, young and part of their core, signed long-term for the next six years. I think Chicago definitely should go with the forward if they're picking fourth overall. I like Logan Hensler. Him and Matthew Schaefer are kind of going to be jockeying it out all season for that number one defenseman spot. But at fourth overall, if it was sixth or seventh overall and some of those stud forwards were off the boards, then maybe you go defenseman. But yeah, I don't, I don't love Logan Hensler here for the Chicago Blackhawks. 
Very, very solid both ways. Doesn't have that much of an... His offensive production wasn't that impressive. 32 points in 61 games, but still. Michael Misa at fifth overall. I am lower on Michael Misa than others. Montreal, I think, will be picking in this range. I know some Canadian fans are probably be like, we're going to be battling for a playoff spot. You guys did nothing this offseason for the most part. You're probably going to be, yet again, the fifth to eighth worst team in the NHL. I, I think I think Montreal should go forward here. They're pretty set in terms of their young defense core. They also have a very good young forward core in terms of prospects and young roster players. But when looking at Misa, man, yeah, 56 points in 45 games in his exceptional status here at 15 years old, or yeah, 15, 16 years old. This year, only 75 points in 67 games. I know that the points doesn't tell the full story, but he didn't take that next step, even though he was on the Saginaw spirit with Zane Perrick. That gives me some hesitation when it comes to Michael Misa. This year is obviously the most important year. If he blows up and has 100 points in 60 games, I'll shut the hell up. But I think I would definitely bet on Frundell and Riabkin in terms of if I was Montreal selecting here. But Michael Meese is still a top 10 prospect. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to absolutely shit on the kid. Frondell to the Utah Hockey Club. I don't think Utah is going to be this bad considering all the moves that they made this offseason. But if it results in them getting a potential top three prospect, a guy that could potentially be the best prospect in this class when it's all said and done at sixth overall, that would maybe be worth it. I am decently high on Frondell. I think he was either third or fourth on my top 10. And yeah, very good at the U20 level. He might actually get some run with the SHL team this year or at least be in the second tier league here. He's already six foot, 190. 96 pounds. He's a big boy and just a very high IQ player. I would bet on Anton Frondel, and I think Utah would be very good if they selected here, them, him there at sixth overall. The Senators at seventh overall. Again, I hope that the Senators are better than seventh overall, similar to Utah after what they did this offseason. Roger McQueen, yeah, I think they probably would go forward. Defense last year went with Carter, or this year went with Carter Yakumchuk. They have Sanderson, they have Shabbat. So it makes sense to go with the forward here. Roger McQueen, six foot five. He has one of the highest upsides in the entire draft, just given his stature for the most part. You could get, he doesn't have a, he doesn't have a taste Thompson level shot, but at six foot five, 190 pounds. Once he fills out, he's going to be unicorn kind of guy. Very good playmaker. I think that'd be a smart pick by Ottawa. Matthew Schaefer to the Seattle Kraken. I really like that fit. I thought Seattle arguably should have went with the defenseman in this year's draft. I think Berkeley Cadden was good value at eighth overall, but they have a shit ton of forward prospects. They don't have a ton of defense prospects. Would have preferred that they went with like a Zane Parrick or a Z Boyum there. But when looking at it, Matthew Schaefer, yeah, he's. Not his offensive numbers weren't that impressive this year. 17 points in 56 games to the OHL. I think he's going to take that next step this year and really show his offensive side of the game. This year at Helenka Gretzky, the Helenka Gretzky Cup, he was very, very impressive for Canada. And I think he's going to shoot up draft boards. Right now, I'd probably have him over Logan Hensler, even though a couple months ago I had Logan Hensler as my top defenseman. I'm liking what I'm seeing out of Matthew Schaefer. I think he's a very stout two way guy. Charlie Trethway at ninth. I don't think Minnesota is going to be that bad, hopefully considering the fact that they had a down year last year and they were still picking at what 12th, 13th overall. But yeah, Trethway, six foot one, typical U.S. developmental program, solid two-way player. It, that'd be a fine pick by Minnesota. I think they probably would go forward with their first round pick next year because they went with Boyum last year. Calgary Flames at number 10. Calgary's going to be bad. I think Calgary can agree. Calgary's going to be a bottom 10 team. That is crazy that they have Minnesota, the Minnesota Wild below the Calgary Flames. Caleb De De Norier, I believe is how you pronounce his name. I probably botched it, De Norier. But he was solid this year. For the QMJHL, he was around point per game. Do they have his stats? He had 56 points in, I think, around 60 games. That'd be a solid pick by Calgary, but I think that they're going to be picking top five and getting one of the actual superstars. Riabkin is still not win in this mock draft, which is crazy. Penguins get Ryabkin. I hate this mock draft. <laughs> if Columbus gets Higgins and Pittsburgh gets Ivan Ryabkin, I am not going to like this draft. Ryabkin was very good this year in the MHL, 58 points in I think like 45 games. Not quite Mitchkov to meet off level of production, but he's probably had the most, he had like the most outs, the third most productive draft year minus one of the last like decade by a Russian prospect. So I think he's shaping up to be a very good, good, good prospect. He's a center as well, I believe. So when looking at him to Pittsburgh, that would be very good. He has legit first line kind of potential. I think that he should go in the top seven. Kashan Atchison to the Philadelphia Flyers, a defenseman. I think Philly 
probably should go defenseman with their first round pick next year, assuming that it's not like a top five pick and one of those stud forwards are available. But when looking at him, yeah, he's like six foot one, had pretty solid production. I believe that he got suspended. He was at the, was he at the forefront of like the bounty gate in the OHL, if my memory serves me correct? Does it say, does it say anything here? But 39 points in 64 games this year. Yeah, he, he's he's in that next tier of defensemen after Hensler and Schaefer as of right now, but could, could potentially rise. Jackson Smith, another defenseman, I believe. He was very solid this year, 29 points in 62 games. They have him going to the Buffalo Sabres. Sabres probably would go defenseman. Hopefully they make the playoffs. I mean, if, if they're selecting here at 13th overall next, next year, it will not be Kevin Adams taking that goddamn selection. But Jackson Smith makes some sense. Another left-handed defenseman into the Buffalo Sabres system would be interesting. But yeah, six foot three, 190 points playing in the WHL. He could definitely rise when it's all said and done. Malcolm Spence at 14th. New Jersey missing the playoffs. That's a, that's a take of all time. Calgary as only the 10th worst team and New Jersey is the 14th worst team. That is interesting. But yeah, Malcolm Spence had a bunch of hype around him like this time last year to be like a top six pick. Still think that he is a very good prospect, but not quite in the, like, the top five or six if you look at it. But I think that he could definitely be a top 10 pick. And this would be a solid ad for the Calgary Flames. Denoye and Spence would be a solid haul. I think they're going to be picking higher than that. But if that is the case... Luka Radiovich, uh, I probably just botched that name, but he plays for the same SHL team as Leo Carlson did. He played some games at the SHL level, but yeah, 33 points in 43 games last season. He can be a high upside guy. It's going to be interesting to see if he goes up a tier to like the Sweden, Swedish AHL or if he plays at the SHL team because if he produces at a high level there, don't be surprised if this guy's the third defenseman off the board, maybe even jumps a Logan Hensler or a Matthew Schaefer. And then to round it out, Will Moore, another just solid U.S. developmental program forward. Pretty solid numbers, 43 points in 50 games at the USHL level. Six foot two, only 161 pounds. He needs to put on some goddamn weight. But yeah, Detroit probably would go defense, or no, forwards here. What am I saying? Would go forward here, considering they are pretty loaded at the defenseman position. But yeah, let me know in the comments. What do you think about this mock draft? Who would you move up? Who would you move down? Do you think the Calgary Flames are not going to be a bottom nine team in the NHL? Do you think Frondell is going to go after fifth overall? I'll be seeing the next one.